Appreciate you hitting the button. Welcome to the How to Hustle podcast with Hype. Follow me on Instagram and Twitter at I am Hype. That's H Y M P E. It's Hype. It's not Hype. I'm not geeked up. Appreciate you hitting the button. Welcome to the How to Hustle podcast with Hype. Slow down, Hype. <laughs> this is episode 110. You follow me on Instagram and Twitter at I am Hype. That's H Y M P E. It's Hype. It's not Hype. I'm not geeked up. Special guest in the building. Introduce yourself to the audience. Uh, this is Derek Pye Bell, Gorilla Prince, uh, Fitness and Athletics, Bronx, New York, Gorilla Prince Consulting, In the Miss, um, Non for Profit. Copy that. We are going to break down all of that situation for you on this episode because this is an episode. This is a, not an artist spotlight because he's not an artist, but this is just a flat spotlight episode. Now, let's hit the rundown before we do that. H2H Cleaning, that is my cleaning company, is at H2H Cleaning on Instagram only. But if you make it worth my while, we will slide out to the Bronx and tighten up this whole situation. Roofing, plumbing, HVAC, flooring, carpeting, cleanups, cleanouts, and remodels. However you need it, we will make it happen over there at H2H Cleaning on Instagram only. Now we go to my clothing line. It is at Custom Hustle World on Instagram. It's Custom Hustle Co. on Twitter. Custom jerseys, jackets, football, baseball, hockey. However you need them, we can make them happen. We got the snakes. We got the sweatsuits. We have the snakes available in the lady size, the kid size. However you need them, we can customize them, and we can do them in any color that you prefer. Now, we also have the spring jackets. We're getting up on the summer and the springtime, you know, late nights. You want to have a little something on. We got those for you. Just get at us at Custom Hustle World on Instagram and Custom Hustle Co. on Twitter. Also, the barber capes. We now have the barber capes that have the entire How to Hustle Enterprise. All the logos are on them. Or you can get your own situation with the logo on it. It's going to cost you a little extra, but we will take care of you. Now, E-Block Radio Network every Monday, 2 o'clock on the E-Block Radio Network. GFT Radio Network every Tuesday at 2 o'clock on the GFT. Then we go 216 The Blend. That's 12 midnight, 8 a.m., 8 p.m. Thursday, I Say Podcast Radio Network at 10 a.m. And the THC Media on Saturday at 10 a.m. West Coast, what's happening? We need y'all. Now, episode 110, you ready? You got to be ready because this, this is all about you, baby. <laughs> I'm, I'm, re- I'm ready. I'm ready. Tell us all about the program. How do we help the children out with the boarding school situations? Break it all down for all of us as though none of us know anything about it. Right. Floor is um, yeah. Um, once again, Derek Pye Bell out of the uh, Bronx, New York. And um, basically, um, I guess I can start from the beginning and how it is that I got into training in the first place. I won't get too long-winded, but um, was, um, you know, came home from the federal penitentiary and um, long story short, one of my bunkies was um, was training at a gym at the time and um, he said, um, yo, I'm going to, you know, I, I made a call to this guy. I want you to, you know, yo, you need to train at this gym. I said, man, I'm not doing no training. I'm not, you know, I'm not into it. He said, it's too late. I already gave him the name, so you need to go see him. Um, you know, long story short, that was probably life changing for me because at the time, you know, I was working at a lighting company, not, not doing, not really doing much and pretty much really frustrated. Um, you know, because of course, you know, the money's not coming in the way that I wanted it. And so started training, you know, really liked it, realized that, wow, this is something that I can do. Um, and then fast forward a couple of years that, you know, um, got fired from crunch, um, uh, cause I, I was just too much at, at, you know, at that time I, I kind of grew a little bit bigger than what it is that they wanted. So, and that's what made me step out onto my own and start Gorilla Prince Athletics and, um, started with, of course, my own kids, um, and still training some adult clients at the same time, but then kind of really like, um, you know, uh, forking off to to where it is. I was working almost exclusively with, with kids and um, and working on them to get ready for, at the time my sons were heavy into 
combine preparation. Um, so I started working, you know, in 40s and 510, five shuttles, broad jumps. So I, I got really heavy into that to where it is I started a combine. So every year I would do a combine. And um, as I'm doing these combines, what I started doing, um, because at the time my oldest son was already away at boarding school, I believe. Yeah, I think Daniel was away. Um, and so what I started doing is, because I'm realizing what kind of education he's getting, what kind of, just overall what he's getting, what sort of experience he's getting away at school. And I wanted to see if I could provide that for other kids that came from inner cities that, that looked like us. Um, so I started doing the combine and inviting those boarding schools in, to come into the city to look. Because I, what I also felt like was that the local schools, the high schools and the and the, the local Catholic schools that everyone so covets, I don't really feel like, I feel like they kind of took us for granted, like, especially the Catholic schools to where they felt like, well, well they're going to come here anyway. So they didn't feel like it was necessary to court or sell their school to families because they were going to come there anyway. So I gave families a different option to look at to where it is. Not only are these schools going to court you, they're really going to lay it out and let you know what this experience is all about. Um, so this is what I wanted to. Ask. This is what I wanted to ask now. Yep. What are some of the benefits of sending the kids to the boarding schools? Um, I mean, the, the the thing about it, us as parents, right? Um, I think that the biggest thing is the independence, right? Them, um, I, I tell parents all the time, you, you wanna know what type of parent you've been to your son or daughter and you send them away to school and that right there will give you a really good idea as to what kind of job you did. Um, and I say that to say, because anytime that I sent one of my sons away to school, um, I always got, great responses like man you know Shay's a great kid Skylar Damon's a great kid man you know so what me and my wife at the time realized is that we gave them a pretty good foundation you know no they didn't come from money or any of that but they still came did what they did came what what, what it is that they were supposed to do apply themselves academically, you know. It's not, it ain't even about the money. It's about the character. Like right. you said, this is them speaking for you when you're not even there to speak for yourself. So if they go out and they hold the door open for an old lady or uh, watch their mouth because somebody older is walking past, those are the things that speaks volumes for you. Those are the things that are character, situ uh, character traits that have nothing to do with money or the situation that you've been put in. That goes to the things that were instilled into you. That's Absolutely. like, you know, what you, what you lead in there. Absolutely. And um, yeah. And so, you know, putting them in that situation and, you know, of, of course, in our coming from our community, um, you know, that's, it's almost like a, a taboo to send your kid away to school because we are so um, locked into keeping our kids home and close to us. But sometimes that can be to the detriment because if you're keeping them close just to keep them close to you, but the opportunities there for them are not going to be able to give them what it is that they're looking for, then then we're kind of doing them a disservice. Right. So that's uh that's one of those things where I always throw at people where everybody's not a big picture thinker. Everybody's not looking at the entire board. They're looking right. at what makes my situation better for me. Right. So if you recognize that I have a child that has a certain talent, skill, or ability, like me and you had this conversation a few days ago before we even got to the episode where there's so many ways to dominate the game without getting 30 or without yeah. getting 12 sacks to the point where you being in that situation might lead to you becoming a trainer for the next 25, 30 years. That's had right. you never gone to that school and never been roommates with this kid who had a connection or ended up playing at a bigger school where you got to visit and you got to meet all of these different people. Yep. So some people's circumstances are, yeah, you need to get out of here because if you don't get out of here, it's going to end bad or you're not going to ever accomplish. Right. You're not ever going to uh, 
take advantage of none of those natural abilities that you have. That you have. You're going to just become, just like you yes. said, I'm in the feds now. Yeah, I mean, and, 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 and Jihad, the, the thing about it is, is that, and, and we have a very, we have a very bad habit in our community of celebrating mediocrity. Um, and what I mean by that is that our community, like we celebrate things that are not necessarily ne uh, celebratory worthy, you know what I mean? So-and-so is having a baby. So we throw these elaborate baby showers, right? Um, and then if you look at that same kid 20 years from now, right? You're like, man, you know, I remember that. You, you remember the baby shower, but all of, you know, the the $9,000 baby shower never, it, it didn't turn into the young woman or the or the young man going on to Stanford. You know why? Because that was never the plan, you know? And, and, and we have to figure out why was that not the plan? How about we don't do the big baby shower and we do, and we put that money up for them to be able to possibly go on to Stanford or wherever, right? So, or in school or whatever the case may be. But we got so this is, to do better. <laughs> this is one I'll throw at you for myself. I got engaged in March and married in July. Mm -hmm. And I said to everybody who asked, well, why you want to do it like that? Why you want to do it that fast? You're supposed to have all this time. And I'm like, because the thing that doesn't matter is who was sitting at table five. What did the centerpieces look like? Who took the pictures? Where we get the flowers from? What did the cake look like? None of that right. matters. What matters right. is it's seven years later and we're still together. There what go. matters is that we build a life together, that we really love each other and that we're not looking to get married for the pictures we take in a day. Yep. And that we're looking to build this situation together. Yep. Those situations that you're talking about is like, yeah, this is going to look crazy on Instagram for the next couple of days. Right. But then when this individual needs somebody to watch this baby so that they can go to work to provide for this baby, are you there to help? Right. <laughs> no, no, one, no one in that room is going to be up for that. Copy. You know what I mean? And that, and, and, and that's the thing. We, 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 we have to, you know, like I said, and this is why it, it's it's really my mission to to win. You know, when I'm talking, you know, this morning, you know, I had I got I had twelve year olds at the gym this morning at at six in the morning, and I'm telling them, you know, you are what you repeatedly do. So if you show up here, you know, it's just oh, it's just a minute late, coach. No, it's not. I said because that that. That snowballs into so many other different things. You know, the fact that you weren't here early is a problem. And so these are things that, especially these these kids now, um, that are so uh, social media driven, they don't have, they lack any code, right? They don't have any code in terms of how to do things the right way, because there is no code. There is there there are no consequences. Um, and so because they live like that, you know, I have to coach them a certain way. And, you know, most parents, you know, some parents will be like, man, that's a little bit harsh. Nah, not really. Because the because as you know and I know, Jihad, is that once they leave that that youth, the confines of youth football, high school football is all business. And college football is for certain all business. And if you're not teaching them how to be businessmen and women, then they're going to be in for a rude awakening because they don't understand business etiquette, right? You you not you shouldn't show up late for a business meeting. So yeah, you don't show up for a job interview at five o'clock at five oh two. There you go. You and show so, up at you show up at four or two. <laughs> there you go, right? And if you truly want the job, right? And so these are things that you know um, that for me, yeah, I'm training them, but I'm also mentally because I know that especially if they look like me, there are so many obstacles already there put in their way for them to trip up on. And so, if I'm hard on them, that's fine. Because 
like I explained to them, the person at the next base, he's not even really going to be hard on you. He's just going to deal in business. And you're going to be, you're going to take it personally when that person is dealing business. But all of this time, I've been trying to show you proper business practice through training. Through understanding the discipline of training and getting up. Hey, coach, why we got to do four in the morning workouts? Because no one else is. This is one of those things I always throw at people from the business perspective is business is never personal. It's just always business. It's just always and, business. <laughs> and what you stating is they're going to get two, three other kids. And if you don't meet the expectation, they're just going to move right on past you to the they next got, kid. They, 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 listen, <laughs> I, I let them know that when they are recruiting you, should you have the opportunity to actually be recruited, right? Because the reality is, is that that only happens to 5% of the kids in this country. So should you have that opportunity where you're at, where someone's actually saying, yo, I want you to come to my university. Should you have that opportunity? Understand that he's already recruiting past you. Mm -hmm. And it's all business. So understand not even that. Not even recruiting past you. He's recruiting the kid in the next town that plays the exact same position as you. Absolutely. Absolutely. And, 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 and we're going to see Who's, who's the better one? And, and, and that's that. What's the age group uh, for the kids that you train? Um, look, I've had, look, I've had kids. Well, you, you know, said you got adults too, so we go. Yeah, I, I, I mean, my, my, the adults that I have now are pretty much corporate adults. Like, you know, um, they work for, you know, big Wall Street firms and stuff like that, lawyers and stuff like that. Those are, those are, and, and, and it's funny, right? Because those people have actually grown with me, right? I, 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 have a, I have a client that I train now. I was training Shomo when he was fresh out of NYU. Now he has twin boys and, you know, he's, he's at this huge hedge fund doing it big time, right? So some of these people have grown with me as they, you know, and as, as I've grown, they've grown as well. You know, me, I mean, me and Shomo, we, we're really tight. We had mixed season tickets together. So it's just like things like that to where it is. Um, some of the clientele I, I, I have have been around me for a very long time. But I've trained clients as young as four years old. Um, young oh, yeah. Lady, yeah. Yeah, Dylan, Dylan, Dylan was probably one of... I, I would say outside of my youngest son, I started training when he was two. Um, Dylan was probably someone that, you know, wasn't in my family, but very close to me. But Dylan is now starting as a true freshman at Princeton but, and, and from across. But and this is why I, sh I try to show people that this is understand where it is where it all came from. I told her parents, I identified very early, she has a skill set. And of course they thought I was, you know, a little bonkers. I'm telling you, I see a skill set. She has decent speed. She had decent speed at four that most people, of course, are not picking up on. This has right. to be the follow-up question. <laughs> now, yeah. what does the training regimen look like for the four-year-old? Jahan, all you're doing with them is is making them learn athletic movement. That's it. So you're making them skip. You're making them hop. You know what I mean? You, it, it's basic movement, but all you're doing is is training it. You're just training up those muscles. That's it. You're just training it. You're not making them do anything super crazy, right? You you know you make them you you know you may challenge them with a, a couple of different things, but for the most part. You know, all you're doing is putting them in a situation where let me see if you can balance on one leg for 20 seconds. For a four-year-old, of course, they, they're up for that challenge, right? <laughs> right? But they don't know that I'm training them. Mm -hmm. Right. Because by the time they're eight, that balance is a whole lot better if we've been consistent over over a period of time. And now that that eight-year-old starts to look superior. And now you have people ask like, well, why is she able to do that? Like, oh, that's, 
but not knowing that basically it's the right the regiment is in there yeah it, right it, this was something and and like i said you just bring them along with very small athletic movements that's it not nothing crazy nothing you know but you just get them to understand their their bodies right um and that if you know when they accelerate and how can they deaccelerate really fast? Can they do it really fast? If I say, you know, like like the, the old school game, red light, green light, one, two, three. That's all Damn. that is, is acceleration <laughs> and deacceleration. Damn, that's crazy. <laughs> that's, all, that's all people don't even realize that that's a drill. But you know nah, what I mean? I, I ain't gonna hold you until you just said that. I never even would have put that together. <laughs> yep, of course not. But but I do it with with young kids like that. They don't know. They, yeah. they, you know, they don't have any idea. But that's a, an acceleration drill and a deacceleration drill. You see, that was just like learning how to play Uno with my dad. You had no idea that you was just basically in math class. Pretty much. <laughs> um, same thing so with dominoes. Yeah. Was another, that was another one. Yep. Um, now, uh, what would you say would be one of your proudest moments uh, from the program? The program doing what led you to a very proud moment? Oh man, um, I have so many, Jahad. You know, I, just give I me, have... just give me, just give me, a, give me two of them, man. Um, First two that popped in your mind. I mean, I think that the, you know, my oldest son is um, is a captain in the army now, has his own daughter, and um, he is. You know, to see him do what he's doing and having gone on and, and established himself and just, you know, to see him taking care of business, right? Um, and then I, I can't say, I can't say too, because, you know, um, my middle son is, um, is a teacher and um, coaches football and basketball at a boarding school. And, um, these guys have definitely went above and beyond in taking care of business as men of color. And then I got it through with my youngest, you know, him having two older brothers that kind of paved the way for him, gave him the ability to, to create a situation for himself where, you know, he's, he's now, you know, playing wide receiver at the university of Wisconsin. So, I mean, but I have, I mean, I can't, I mean, of course, I'm going to go to those because th those are my sons, but I have. Because so those are the personal experiences. Yeah, right, copy. I mean, they ain't mad at that. Yeah, but I, I have so many kids that are, that are doing some amazing things. Now, tell me this. Uh, for those yep. who are watching on the eBlock Radio Network, yep. you see the photo of the greatest of all time over your right shoulder right there. <laughs> right. Why, how has that Mamba mentality that you have on the wall right there, yep. how has that influenced or what is that done with the program? Because um, I'm quite sure we're talking all about training and your habits and your and all that that has to do with a lot of that coaching. Because, because, because it does have to, it has to be uh, a mentality, right? Um, you, 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 it goes back to, you know, Kobe and, and what it is um, and how um, disciplined he was, right? We are what we repeatedly do, right? Um, and that's a fact. There's, you know, change is inevitable, growth is optional. So if you don't want it, um, I think that it it shows up pretty quick, right? Mamba mentality means that you, you, you are, you are driven. It's, it's almost as if you are hypnotized, right? To the point where you are so driven that this is un unconsciously, you have a certain level of discipline that is, is untouchable. The average person can't understand. The, the average person can't understand it, and they and then of course you know Jihad. That's when we start calling people uh, names, right? 
crazy. Oh man, he's intense. You know, um, all of these things that associate all the things that she, because you can't understand, yeah, <laughs> right, that associate someone with having a level of discipline that they can't fathom, right. See, the thing about that is, we talked about that in last week's episode. Um, just because everybody's not going to understand the vision that you have. That's everybody true. can't see through the eyes that you see the world from. Yep. And everybody's not as passionate about whatever that situation is. You could say, I'm going to be the best baker in the world, and I'm going to spend all my time trying to perfect the cupcake. And right. go at it with the exact same intensity, focus, and drive as somebody being trained to be in the combine and trying to get on the team. like. All right. of those things are just a mentality. They're just a focus. They're a thought process. And a lot of people, if they can't understand it, they try to belittle it because they can't understand it. And that's a you right. problem, not a me problem. Right. Um, now, no, let me see. lastly, because uh, this is just part one. This will be a series, y'all. This is yep. just part one where we're kind of introducing the program to people. We will lead you into maybe three or four parts of this series, but we will lead you through the series here. Right. Uh, as a As a person who's a parent or a student uh, athlete or an adult or somebody listening to this who wants to get their child involved, what should their expectation of the program be? Um, the expectation of the program is should be that um, it is, it is going to, it's going to motivate them. Um, it's going to groom them. Um, it's going to give you the parent an understanding of whether or not how committed your student athlete, your son or daughter is to the process. Because I'm going, you know, having to get up at three in the morning for a 4 a.m. workout at, you know, five times a week, that that might not be for you, you know. Um, you know, making you run some of the toughest hills <laughs> up in Yonkers for, you know, for speed at five in the morning, it might not be for you. You know, um, you know, pool workouts at five in the morning, you know, and you 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 gotta do a full sprint for two miles in the pool. Um, all of that stuff, it, it you know. There's a, there's a reason why there's there's I don't have 50 kids doing you know my summer program because there's not 50 kids that want it that bad and and then it comes down to statistics right Jahad like how many how many kids actually go on and make it to to that to that coveted space that everybody wants right that D1 space right. How many kids actually go on and make it to that space? Not only just make because there's a bunch of kids that can make it there. That but but once they get there and realize that, you know, everybody's fast, everybody can catch. You know, what are you doing to separate yourself? What you do? You took the you took the you took the words out of my mouth because like we just was talking about in the recruiting situation. There's a kid in Georgia who's mm -hmm. right down the road who's going to run just as fast as you. He's 6'2", 230, just like you is. Now yep. it's all about the, that extra drive, desire, that want to, that's going to separate you from them. Who's showing up at four? Yep. Who's workout is scheduled for four, but they showed up at three? Yep. Who's, who's putting in the extra time? Who was supposed to be done at three, but they still here at four? Yep. All of that is the stuff that will separate who really want it from who just saying that they want it. Right. I said that was the last thing, but I got one more for you. Absolutely. How is it that a parent could hinder the child from the situation. Because if you have oh, a child man. who says, if you have a child, I know this was a loaded one. If you have a child who says, my, my workout is scheduled for four, but I want to show up at three, but the parent is not really like going oh, with man. it or the, the Look, parent is prohibiting that. I got, I, I got, that a group of parents that I've been dealing with for the last couple of years, Jahan, that have been absolutely committed. Um, but then there are I can I can tell you this, Jahad, that the commitment to my my summer program in particular has scared off a lot of parents. Um it and then I also will say this, 
not only has it scared them off, but when I tell them what the price tag is for the summer pro, uh, I can see that they're like, oh, no, I, I'm not, I don't want to spend that. So, and what that also shows me is that, oh, no, I, he, I'm not spending that on him. Like, but once again, you have to understand that if you don't make the investment, they don't get to the space, right? Because I think me and you had this discussion before uh, off air, Michael Vick, AI, those guys, LeBron, those, those guys are anomalies, right? If, if, if they had trainers, they were, they were going to be great anyway. It's the, it's the, it's the young lady, the young man that you have to bring along that needs to come to me, right? Um, the one that you have to cultivate a little bit, right? And if you're not willing to make that investment, whether it's the, in time, the time investment or the financial investment, I have seen Jihad where parents have ab absolutely dampered their kids' expectations, like, just based on how they move, like, oh no, I don't worry about that. Just you, you just um, we just look at HBCUs, right? Not knowing that you know HBCUs now they have some standards as well too. Like you're not just you're not just getting into those schools, but I have seen just because just as a way to not fully commit to something that's going to be uncomfortable for them. From a time standpoint and from a financial standpoint, they will damper the student athlete's whole uh, motivation. And I've seen that a lot lately, right? But I think I told you this. If four years at the University of Michigan is worth 530000 how much do you think that you have to invest for your kid to be able to get a scholarship at the University of Michigan. What's the dollar amount? And, and I'm saying over a period of time, up until it's time for them to get recruited, boom. What do you think that dollar amount is for them to, for you to be able to get that? I don't know. I can't even put a, I can't even put a number on that one, but I get what you're saying. Right. But I, I can tell you the sweet spot is usually anywhere from thirty-five to forty-five thousand, mm. somewhere in there. And I'm I'm talking about camps, training, you know, specialty work, massages, whatever, you know, recovery. Yeah, the the, the, the whole the whole gambit, the all, the whole, all of that, the all thing. Of, yeah, the all-encompassing thing, the nutrition and all yep. of those, all things, of that, all of that. All of that. No, I just I said I get what I get what you're saying, but like I said, I know, I know, like I said, I don't want to go through everything today because we're going we're going to build on this situation and we're going to turn this into, like I said, this will be a series that we're going to build on and we're going to talk about the entire program, how the program uh, leads you into college, how it prepared those kids who have already gone through the program, what has yep. life turned them to because they got into the program, and get the perspective from all of those different people. So yep. that we can turn this into, like I said, a, a series that we can build here for the Hot Hustle Podcast. Uh, Absolutely. Lastly, let them know where can they where can they tap in with you? Where can they find out even more information about the program that we haven't given them today? Absolutely. You, 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 can, you can find me on Instagram at Gorilla Prince Experience, on Twitter at Prince Gorilla. Um, we're on Facebook. Facebook also at Gorilla Prince Athletics. And um, if you go to our website, it's www.gorillaprinceathletics.com. Um, and you can, and if you are interested in the consulting, it's, um, it is gpconsulting.nyc. And um, yeah, that's, that's where you can find us and, and check us out. And, and see the different things that we're doing. Like, like I said, we're about to uh, kick off our summer program in the next couple of weeks. We we start doing our evaluations for the summer program, and you know, and, it, and it's going to be um, you know twelve weeks of, of intense training. And we, like I said, we we, we get it going, man.
12 weeks of hell is what he didn't want to say. <laughs> I, 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 hey, Jahan, I don't want to scare him away. I don't want to scare some, him people, away. some people go hear that and go, that's exactly what I need. And yeah. Some people going to go, oh, no, I can't do nothing with that. Yeah, now, yeah. before we close out episode 110, this is, this is where we switch the show up to hype on the hot seat. I need yep. two questions from you to throw at me. Okay. Um. What? What? Um. With that, with that, with everything that you're doing, because I know it, it's pretty, uh, pretty entrenched in multiple businesses. How is it that you manage to to juggle everything and still be able to be a parent at at the level that that you want to be. So this is seem this is gonna be the question everybody always asks me. Um is how you manage all of these things. Yes. So the short answer for this one uh is if I put my name on something then it has to be going at with that and drive intensity and with that focus. It's right. one thing I don't play with is my name. Right. Uh, and you get your name from your father. I would never disrespect my father as to disrespect his name, dead or right. alive. So as far as the family goes, my wife got my name. I gave my name to her. So that is something that has my name on it. Her, my children are not to be played with. These are not things that are for the public, as I tell people. I don't right. post pictures of them on the page because those are not a public situation. Right. And right. they are priority number one. Right. Now. Building on all of the different businesses is just like you turn those into family situations. My daughter has a jacket that when she goes to school, her friends can say, hey, what's that? <laughs> right. When I have a certain, I got this one specific client that I go do the cleaning job, she goes with me for this job. Right. So that she can, one, that's a way for us to spend time together while we're still doing the business situation. Right. I also got one that I've done, I got done cleaning with my wife. Excuse me. When we do yeah. deliveries for things. If I got to go meet somebody, we're probably going to go together. So right. that one, this is why daddy's on the phone. This is why we was on vacation and I'm on the beach scheduling a cleaning job. Right. <laughs> like, right. I'm not even home. Though. I'm not going to do this one, but right. I'm scheduling it. And when we go to dinner tonight, we're going to easily be able to handle that because daddy just handled that. Right. So right. it's like I try to tie it in to make it a us situation and not a my situation. No, so absolutely. No, that's right. So you can see both sides of me going across a whole floor on my stomach to clean it and me taking a couple of orders for a couple of jerseys, jackets, or what have you. Right. No, that's dope. That's good stuff. My second question, man, I'm I'm gonna I'm gonna switch it up, man. Um you, you only you, you're gonna you're gonna get being that you're in Philly, um top five Philly MCs MCs top five Philly MCs okay MCs MCs now we we not remember MC is not a rapper oh yeah I'm 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 not gonna give you I'm the my list won't be like anybody else's <laughs> um, okay. okay so. Number one is bias is my brother. <laughs> um, okay. C CDF is always gonna be number one on my list. Okay. Beans is number beans is number two on my list. Okay. Uh, that's my family. Yeah, that's Mac number two. Okay. Now uh I'm trying to think uh should I give him an order or spade? Major figure spade. Okay. I always love spade. Um okay. Cree. Cree is my man. I always okay. loved Cree. Okay. And Oskino. Oskino was in and out of jail when they had the whole state property run. But right, right. if you've ever been into any of them Oskino mixtapes, then you know why I got Oskino on that list. Right. So that's why I said I ain't going to give you the political answers. I'm going to give right, you people, right. people and, whose and, songs and, I got right here in my phone. <laughs> right, right. And no Black Thought? I couldn't put him over none of them. Wow. Wow. Okay, okay. Because everybody always give you black thought when they go lyricists from the city. I mean, copy. Everybody listens, they list. When something, the thing about music is it's so subjective because it's the story that they're telling hits everybody different. Differently, no so, doubt. It's, <laughs> and no doubt. you can't really never tell nobody they list is wrong because 
it's all about their experiences in their life. Uh, right, they, right, the right. way that they got where they at. But right, everybody not, always, everybody always put black thought on those lists. But like I said, I know my list ain't like nobody else's list. Yeah, no, I, I mean, I, look, I'm, I'm, I'm into, to, I'm for sure, I'm, I'm into lyrics. So yeah, um, the words matter. That's what I always tell them. So the words matter. And, <laughs> and 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 you know, every time I see you know black thought do something like we, you know, like he he. I mean, he rips it down. You know what I mean? He rips it down. You know, um, and so, I, uh, like I said, he, he to me, he always has to be in the conversation in terms of some. I, I believe that there's not many that want to stand in a cipher with him. And yet, see, that's how I always <laughs> judge people: is if we put a beat on, can you last? A lot right. of these dudes ain't lasting. That, that's a lot of these new dudes ain't lasting. And that's what I mean. And and you know, thought is gonna he's gonna go. I believe beans, he can go. Yeah, beans is gonna go with anybody. Right. <laughs> so um I, I, I you know, so those two in particular, you know, so I was just curious as to, you know, in, where you were at, you know, on, on your top five. That's cool though. So all right, I appreciate you coming on. That was episode 110 of the How to Hustle podcast with Hype. We are out. I am Hype. That's H-Y-M-P-E. It's Hype. It's not Hype. I'm not geeked up.